Hi everyone. Uh, today we want to move on to a new topic, heap sort. Okay. Well, let's do a very quick review on the master theorem. So for the master theorem, our goal is that if we have a divide and conquer algorithm, and for this divide and conquer algorithm, well, it we assume that it divides the full set of the problem into a sub a number of the sub problems and for each size of the sub problem that the size will be n divided by b and after that there will be some additional cuts after or before we have done the divide and conquer and usually we call that the aftermath part of the recursion okay and the cost of the uh, the cost of the aftermath will be assume that to be the fn okay and then after we have those information and we want to put this divide and conquer uh, the tn like this so tn equals a multiplied by n div t n divided by b and plus fn which is the aftermath and after that well we only have to compare two things well fn and then n powers n log b a okay you want to figure out if fn and the n to the log, uh, n to the log b a they grow equally fast or uh, fn is faster or fn is slower and after figuring figuring this part out and then you will be able to see which case it might be so case one or case two or case three and for case three it will be a little bit tricky well after you see uh, uh, for the first part if fn is omega n to the uh, n to the uh, log b a and this means f n grows faster than n to the log b a and after that you also have to prove this part in order to really use uh, the case rate okay and after that we talk about the sorting algorithm so far we have discussed and in our formal lecture we discuss two sorting algorithm well we they are the merge sort and then the insertion sort well, for the merge sort, well, the good news is the worst case running running time will be O log uh, O n log n. So this is faster compared with the insertion sort. And the insertion sort, the worst case will be O n square. Okay. Well, but what is the cool thing about the insertion sort? Number one, is this sorting in a uh, if we want to sort with the insertion insertion sort and then that is the sorting algorithm in place this means you don't have to require extra memory space from the operating system so that's the first good thing and the second thing is well uh, in the best case well in the best case of the insertion sort think about that so if this list is already pre-sorted and then what do we say uh do we have to do any of the shifting no right and do we have when we include one more value into a sorted portion well it's this new value is already at the right it is already at the right place so do we have to do a lot of comparison no do we have to do any insertion in the best case no okay so in this case, well, in the best case scenario, and the insertion sort will be faster than merge sort. Okay. So in the in the worst case, of course, merge sort is O n log n, and the insertion sort is O n square. And but in the best case, well, actually, insertion sort is faster. And what else? Well, remember when we are doing the merge sort, we have we have the divide and conquer. When we are using divide and conquer, what does that mean? This means we are using recursions. And for the recursions, remember, they are function calls, right? So when we are doing the function calls in Python, and there, there, uh, there will be extra calls, we have to trigger another, uh, another function call, and then we have to send the parameters, and we also have to uh, maintain extra memory space. So this will be some extra cost for the recursion. So actually, if you have one algorithm and two in implementation, one with recursion, one without in recursion, and then you will find that in most of the cases, the burden without recursion will be faster. What does this mean? This means the recursion will be slower simply because there are a lot of the function calls behind the scene. This is also another advantage of the insertion sort. Okay, so today we want to move on and we want to talk about the heap sort. So what's the cool thing about the heap sort? So number one, we want the, we want a fast algorithm, 
right? We want to have a O in login if if we can choose between O in login and N squared. And what else? Well, we also want to sort in place. We don't have to, we don't want an algorithm uh, that keep on requiring memory space from the operating system. And then we have the heap sort and the heap sort has both of those features. Okay, so what is a heap? Well, a heap is this structure and uh, this, uh, this is a complete tree. So how do we define a complete tree? Well, a complete tree, oh, by, by the way, we are talking about the binary complete tree. Okay, so there could only be up to two possible children nodes for each of the parent node. And then for a complete tree, well, you can consider that as a tree structure from the top to bottom. And then if we fill in the nodes from top to bottom, and on each level, we fill in the nodes from the left side to the right side. And then we have a complete binary tree structure. Okay, so let's take a, take a look on this one. So we want to fill in the nodes from top to bottom. Okay, so we fill in the, uh, this layer, we fill in this layer, the second layer, and then the third layer are full. And then the last layer, not full, but we fill in the nodes from the left side to the right side. Okay, we have the two, four, and one, and then we stop here. So there's no empty slot before one. Okay, so before one, we have been filling in the nodes from top to bottom, and for each for each layer or each level, we fill in from the left side to the right side. So yes, uh, this tree structure is a complete binary tree. Okay, and. In our textbook, we call them uh, the nearly complete binary tree because, well, if we fill in all the remaining the remaining nodes on the last level, and then this is really a hundred percent complete binary tree. Okay. Well, and usually, uh, what we can see is well for the unfilled level of the slots, we can just assume that they are empty pointers. So there is still a right child to seven, but we assume that that is just a now node or a empty node. Okay. And for the heap, how do we really store the heap in a tree structure? And of course, you may think about the binary tree, right? And if you uh, have been in a uh, this structure course, and I'm pretty sure you know binary tree, but for the heap, since we know they are complete binary tree structure and actually we can put them put all the values into an array so we just put all the values from top to bottom and then for each level from the left side to the right side and we put all the values into an array and then we have this array like this and then if we want to put them put all the values into a binary uh, tree structure and then we will have a heap so well using making use of the completeness feature of the heap. We are able to represent a heap in a in an array structure, which is much, much easier. Okay? And then since we, we can put uh, the heap into an array structure, so what cool thing do we have? Well, we can, where is the root? Well, the root is the very first value, right? And remember in our textbook, we always count the indexes from the one so we can say okay the root will be the a1 okay and if we have a node in the middle which is a i and then how do we find the parent so the parent is the a floor divided by two so this is the integer division or a floor division okay and then how about the two possible children of a uh, sorry of i and then that they are at the index 2i and 2i plus 1. So if you have the i, and then i floor divided by 2, you have the parent. And then the two children will be 2i and 2i plus 1. Okay, so this is a cool structure. And now let's talk about heap. So another property of the heap is we want to enforce a rule. The rule is for each node, uh, for each parent child pair. 
So a parent and child, and then the rule should be the parent is always greater or equal to the value of the child. And this should be true for all the parent-child pair. Okay, so we want to enforce this rule for all the possible nodes, and then we have a max heap. So, well, in this book, we only talk about the max heap. And of course, if you want to, invert, uh, if you want to in reverse the rule, so if you want to, uh, to enforce the rule, the, an opposite rule, saying the parent is always smaller or equal to the child, and then you will have a mean heap. But anyhow, in, uh, in this lecture, we only talk about the max heap. Okay, so if we can enforce this rule, we are doing a max heap. And then my question is, where is the largest value in a heap after the heap is done right, is done in the right way? So where is the largest value? So think about that. Uh, well, if the parent is larger, then all, all the parents in the heap is greater than their children. And then the largest value, it will go to the very top. So the largest value will be the root. Okay, and see, let's see this question. The smallest value in the heap as an array is the last value. Is that true or false? So we know the largest value is the root, and this means that we, uh, that the largest value is the first value in the array. But how about the smallest value? How about we see this example? So on this example, and you will find one, which is indeed the smallest value, and it is the last value in the array. So can we come to this conclusion that the smallest value will be the, uh, will be the value on at the tail? or at the end. So think about that. The answer is no. Why? Well, let me give an example. Say if I change this one to six. Okay, so for this one, I change it to six. So is this still a valid max heap? Think about that. So this one, oops, sorry, this one, I change it to six. So the answer is yes. I didn't violate anything. So 16 is greater than 14, 14 is greater than seven, and seven is greater than six. So I didn't break anything. However, if I change this one to six, and the smallest value will be two. So in this case, it's not guaranteed the smallest value will be the last value in the heap, okay? So let's see. Well, and now we want to move on and we want to define the height of the heap. So the height of a node in the tree equals the number of the edges on the longest downward path to a leaf. Okay, so this is the height of a node. And then let's move on. Well, we want to define the height of a tree or a heap. So the height of the tree is the height of the root. So if the root go down by one direction, the, uh, go, go down by one direction, there are four edges and down but to the other at uh, the other side, and then the height is three. And then we want to take the higher one. So the height will be four, okay? And so what is the height of an N element heap? Okay, so let's start from the easy case. So how about uh, there's only one node? So if there's only one node, and then we are talking about the longest number of the edges, the, the longest path, and then we are counting the number of the edges, and then there's zero edge to count. So if there's only one node and then the height of this heap is it's zero. So how about we have two or three? So if we have two or three, and then we have one parent and then one or two children, right? So in this case, what's the height? The height will be one. Okay, let's move on. If we have four, five, six, 
7. If n equals 4, 5, 6, 7, and then how, what is the height of this heap? So if we have 4 nodes, 5 nodes, 6 nodes, or 7 nodes, this means we have one level, the second level, and then the third level. So we have three levels, but remember we are counting the, the, uh, the number of the edges for the longest path. So two edges, and then it is the height will be two. Okay, so do you see, do you see any Python? So if we have a n element heap, and then the number, uh, the height will be the log n round down. Okay, do you see that? So if you have two or three nodes, and then what's the height? The height is one. And then we have four, five, six, seven. What is the height? The height is two. Okay, so it's always the log 2n, and then we want to run down, and then we have the height. Okay, well, and well, it is really nice because uh, for most of the operations, well, the height of the heap will be the maximum of the operations we need. So, well, the height of the heap, that is the important factor we are going to use later in this class. Okay, well, and I think I have covered a lot of content. Well, we talk about what is a heap, and then the definition uh, and the features of the heap, and we also talk about the height of the heap. So I want to stop my video here, and the next, uh, next video we want to talk about one of the most important operations, that is the heapify. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.